Welcome back class, I am Mr. Betts and this is Memestry in which we go over an important historical topic that you need to know about using the internet's greatest resource, meme videos and other funny clips. Today's topic, Amelia Earhart. But before that, two things. First, this video is brought to you by NordPass, the incredible new password manager from the makers of NordVPN. It allows you to get, get on with it. Yes, get on with it. <laughs> okay, okay. But also this video is part of Project Herstory, a massive collaboration of history YouTubers in honor of Women's History Month. There's so many go Get on with it! Okay, Amelia Earhart. She was born on July 24th, 1897 in Atchison, Kansas. And from the very beginning, she wasn't about to subscribe to gender stereotypes of the time. I mean, she hunted rats. She rode sleds belly side down. She wore bloomers. This was a tough kid. And she needed to be. Though the family was well off enough, mom took Amelia and her sister to go live in Chicago. It seems that her father, Edwin, had a bunch of demons and was a little bit of a hot mess. High school was a bit of a drag for Amelia. She mainly just kept to herself. In her yearbook, she was labeled as the girl in brown who walks alone. You know the type. Hey, uh. <laughs> After high school, she worked for a while as a nurse during the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918. The thing about working as a nurse during a Spanish flu epidemic is that you get Spanish flu. Now, of course, she recovered, but that was the end of her nursing career. And at this point, Amelia was feeling kind of lost. I need someone to show me my place. Nope, that wasn't happening, because around this time, Amelia was in Toronto and she caught an air expedition. Now, a pilot there, some World War I ace, thought it would be funny to dive his plane down at Amelia and her friend. The friend scampered, but Amelia would not be moved. That experience stuck with her, and then in December of 1920, she got to go on her first ride along in an actual aircraft, and it was over. She knew her purpose. She knew she belonged in the sky. Hey, bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your... She saved up to get lessons from the pioneering female pilot Anita Snook and bought her own plane that she called the Canary. And she wanted to look the part too, so she bought a leather jacket that she would sleep in to make it look all weathered. She even cropped her hair. Amelia soon became a licensed pilot, something rare enough in 1923, even more rare that she was a female, but she would set female altitude records and make a name for herself. And as all this was going on, Charles Lindbergh was thrilling the world by becoming the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic. This was Lindbergh before his Nazi sympathizer phase. <laughs> So a Captain Hilton Raleigh and publicist George Putnam approached Amelia to become the first woman to fly across the Atlantic as a passenger. Amelia said yes, and the adventure went off as planned, but about the flight, Amelia would confess, still did all the flying. I was just baggage, like a sack of potatoes. My life, it's potato. <laughs> Still, she was a bona fide celebrity now, and with George Putnam in tow, they toured around, scored endorsements, she competed in air races, she started the 99s, an organization for female pilots. She was doing everything. It was really hard to keep track of her. What's the best way to reach you? Email? Amelia also found a romantic partner in the recently divorced Putnam, though I wouldn't say that their relationship was red hot. She told him, I want you to understand, I shall not hold you to any medieval code of faithfulness to me, nor shall I consider myself bound to you similarly. Not the sweetest pillow talk, but I've heard worse. You have a beautiful smile. Thank you. You're not that handsome. Wow, thanks. 
doesn't matter. Amelia had bigger plans. In 1932, she set out to be the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. She took off from Harbor Grace, Newfoundland, meaning to land in Paris, but uh, winds and mechanical troubles made her abruptly stop in Northern Ireland. Still counts, and then she was the first woman to fly from Hawaii to California. In the first half of the 1930s alone, she set seven different women's distance and speed records. She was unstoppable. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh no, oh my god. And then she decided to circumnavigate or fly around the entire world. And her route was going to be an equatorial one, which meant that if successful, it would be the longest ever. This also meant that her intended plane, a Lockheed Electra 10E, would have to have special modifications for the long legs, such as additional fuel tanks. So the pilot just asked me if I fueled this plane yet or not, because they're taking off right now. I told him I did. April fools, I didn't. <laughs> they won't make it past Kansas. You know, maybe that's not fun. Amelia assembled her crew, and on March 17th, 1937, she was off on the first leg from California to Honolulu, and that went well. But the second leg was a disaster. Propeller problems, busted landing gear, she skidded off the runway, everything went wrong. Oh, uh, by the way, when I ducked behind that vat for cover, I found a valve marked, Danger, a do not turn. You didn't turn it, did you? Of course I did. The plane needed to be shipped back to California and her entire crew, except for navigator Fred Noonan, abandoned the project. Things were looking pretty grim for Amelia's world flight. <laughs> Say something, I'm giving up on you. But she would not be dismayed. After some more fundraising, Amelia and Fred were ready to go again, this time going east instead of west. And for the first 22,000 miles, it went really, really well. What could go wrong? Do you like being in the front seat? Yeah. All right, here comes the sad part. On July 2nd, 1937, Amelia and Fred took off from Leigh Airfield in Papua New Guinea, bound for Howland Island in the middle of the Pacific. Oddly enough, Howland Island was also the destination of the second leg in her first attempt, you know, the one where the plane self-destructed rather than fly to. Well, it was on this leg that Amelia disappeared. This is a whole What's this new? So what happened to her? Well, we don't know. But most likely she ran out of fuel and they had to ditch into the Pacific. And I can't even imagine that, just wading around in that water. Endless miles from anywhere. You know there's sharks in those waters. Hey! That's fi Honey! Phil's on TV! Now there is some evidence to suggest that they made it to Nicomaroro Reef. Uh, there they found improvised tools, a piece that looks like the window of her plane, and even some beauty products that are thought to be Amelia's. One, two, three, rip. No. Nope. Why did you tell me you were gonna do that? Oh my god! Is my cheek still there? And then there's the she was taken prisoner by the Japanese theory, which is based off of this photograph and had a whole History Channel special centered around it. That was promptly debunked two days after airing when it was found that this photo was first published in 1935, two years before Amelia's flight. But what do you expect? It's History Channel. A little bastard lied to me. We may never know what ultimately happened to Amelia Earhart, but what we do know is that she became and continues to be an inspiration for everyone. A strong female figure that proved that passion and dedication can break through gender norms. A reminder to keep reaching for the sky. We're breaking We're free. So that was the meme story of Amelia Earhart and it was brought to you by NordPass. NordPass is the new password manager made by the guys who make NordVPN. NordPass makes generating insanely secure passwords a breeze and keeping track of them all over your devices is super easy. Doesn't matter what system you're using, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, NordPass has you covered using Argon2 for key derivation and XChaCha20 for your password vault. What's XChaCha20? I don't know, but it gives me an excuse to use this clip. Cha-cha, real smooth.
And you could try NordPass right now for 30 days risk-free. And when you realize how easy and helpful it is, you can get 50% off your subscription by using my link down in the description or the code Mr. Betts Class. That'll get you signed up for just $2.49 a month and add an additional month as well. And lastly, this video is part of Project Herstory, a massive collaboration of history YouTubers in honor of Women's History Month. You can check out the entire playlist over here. You can check out more meme stories over here. Be safe, be healthy, and I'll see you next time.